So this is something I've been waiting for. This is something that, uh, you know, I've thoroughly predicted, you know, that the country would continue to devolve into like a third world nation type of atmosphere. Uh, of course, now with inflation, uh, years after I, I, I said that, uh, and now with supply chain shortages and now with a regime in power that is using the FBI sort of like Lenin used the NKVD and Hitler used the SS to uh, go after political opponents. That's what's happening now in the United States. Uh, Mar-a-Lago is, quote, under siege, raided, and occupied by FBI agents, Trump says. Now, well, I'm going to read the article and we'll uh, talk about why this is happening. Uh, you know, but I do find it kind of interesting that the FBI didn't raid Hillary Clinton after she destroyed thousands of classified emails with a hammer and bleach. Uh, the FBI didn't raid any of the people on, uh, Jeffrey Epstein's list or that were known to have been on his <laughs> Lolita Expl Express plane. Uh, the FBI didn't raid Hunter Biden, uh, after all his laptop came out and there was so much damning evidence and it has been for a while now with his links to Burisma and all the corruption with the Biden family. Uh, there's no, been no raids, there's been no indictments, there's been no uh, anything like that. But with Trump, of course, with Merrick Garland and the DOJ that uh, Biden is working with, uh, this is happening to Trump. And look, uh, you know, say what you want about Trump, but there are many people who uh, firmly stand behind Trump and many people that are upset about this. There are already uh, people showing up to Mar-a-Lago. Trump supporters there to support him, and uh, you know they're they're going to be really upset over this. And a lot of people, half the country, half the country, are going to see this is almost like an act of war. You, you know, and, and it's getting to that point. It's really getting to that point. You know, when when you when the regime in power is using federal authority, when when the regime in power is using essentially the domestic police force to, to just raid political opponents that they're afraid of. For the upcoming election, that is banana republic level stuff. That's or, or communist, right? You you could you could uh, you know compare it to like even a like a first world type of like fascist communist nation or a banana republic like Mugabe or something, <laughs> whatever. Like I, I don't know, jo, jo, what, who was it? Coney or something? I know Coney wasn't really. He's a very different situation, but you know, you get my point. This is kind of like something that should happen. You know, I would I would expect this in like, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this came out in Afghanistan. You know, the Taliban leader was using his Taliban goonies and the remains of the Afghan army to raid p his political opponents in in Afghanistan or something. Uh, but like this is kind of like this is America like this isn't supposed to be happening right uh, but of course we kind of called it here at resisting the reset things would ramp up and that's what we're seeing so let's check out this uh, this article here out of Washington Times Mar-a-Lago under siege raided occupied by FBI agents Former President uh, Donald Trump said Monday that FBI agents raided his Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida and broke open his safe. Ooh, I wonder what they found in there. An unprecedented search that sources say was related to a probe into whether Mr. Trump took classified government documents from his White House tenure. Mm, yeah, I'm sure it, what Trump is what stuffing uh, his, his, his trousers with what government documents, like what, what secret, like, you know, UFO files or something. He's going to release the disclosure information, the Bob Lazar files for the public to see or something. Come on now. Uh, in a statement, Mr. Trump claimed that the arrival of law enforcement was unannounced and politically motivated. These are dark times for our nation. As my beautiful home, Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida is currently under siege. Raided and occupied by a large group of FBI agents, Mr. Trump said in a lengthy statement. After working and cooperating with the relevant government agencies, the unannounced raid of my home was not necessary or appropriate. First of all, the first mistake that Trump is making here is he's cooperating with the government agencies as if he has a chance. These people are out for blood, right? Um... Now, I do think there are forces even above Biden and Trump that are sort of like, you know, so sort of getting their hands uh, into this whole uh, civil war breaking out in the U.S. and almost are benefiting off of it. That Those are called the globalist types. 
uh, that are, that are just play people off against each other. But you know, when when you got um, you know, a, a regime in power that absolutely hates your guts, that has the media on their side, and now they have uh, the the arms of physical force, right? Of uh, the federal uh, FBI and ATF, and and you know, and and these groups, um, when they have control of all of that, and you're out of power, and then you're going to kick them back out of power, like you, you know, you're running for re re-election after they hate you, they're not going to let that happen, okay? So this is what I'm talking about with, you know, Biden and the Democrats and the the George Soros-affiliated sort of uh, NGOs and all of these groups. They, they want Trump out of there. The elite class doesn't want him to run again. So, so, so this is what is happening but Trump of course inflated by his own ego and, and and all of that he doesn't care so um moving on here citing people familiar with the investigation the Associated Press and the Washington Post reported that agents were conducting a court authorized search as they probe uh, the potential mishandling of classified documents that were shipped to Mar-a-Lago this is so vague I mean I, I don't know what? So he mishandled documents. Uh, the National Archives and Records Administration in February asked the Justice Department to probe Mr. Trump's handling of White House records. The surprising referral from the National Archives came after revelations that officials recovered 15 boxes of materials from the former president at Mar-a-Lago that were not handed back to the government as they should have been when Mr. Trump left office. He believes it's the documents in question that everybody's been really upset about from the White House, she told Fox News. Oh, that's Laura Trump that said that. Uh, Mr. Trump's daughter-in-law. And she also said that the former president thinks the FBI engaged in the raid over trivial documents that rightfully belong to him. So, you know, this is, it seems like sort of a, a cover-up. Like, I don't know, this doesn't seem right. Like, he just what accidentally took a few documents or stole some documents so they're raiding his it, yeah the, the regime in power hate like they they foam and seethe they foam and seethe over this guy <laughs> okay <laughs> daily daily okay they foam and they seethe and you tell me this is over a couple of documents he accidentally took and this is the other thing it's kind of like what he like what is our paper documents come on what what this is 2022? You tell me he took some papers? Took some papers? What it like? It's it's almost like uh, you know, it's almost like tacky. It's almost like something you you make up and like, you know, if if you're writing a a comic book about the 1960s or something, like oh, he stole some papers. <laughs> what? Like that. Th since when is anything, uh, you know, recorded or kept in, in, in anything but hard drives in 2022? Or I guess this would be 2020, right? Or 2021. Uh, the search marks a dramatic escalation in law enforcement scrutiny of Mr. Trump and comes as he has been laying the groundwork to make another bid for president in 2024. He's sort of already announced that. So he is um, running again the... A uh, plan here, is, I think, is to indict Trump. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Um, though a search uh, warrant does not uh, suggest criminal charges are near or even expected, federal officials looking to obtain one must demonstrate that they have probable cause that a cr crime occurred. That's true. Um... Uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland would have had a personally had to personally approve the search based on Justice Department guidelines for high-level politically charged investigations. So, what did Trump say? Let's read his full statement. This is an escalation of civil war. We are definitely heading towards civil war, just so everybody knows. Like, we are in a lot of trouble. This country is absolutely doomed. Um, you, you saw the people, uh, you know, I could, you just got to Google it. I don't know if I actually have the video of it here. I, I had it pulled up earlier. But, yeah, there are people that were showing up to Mar-a-Lago after this. 
So this is a really serious situation. Statement from uh, Donald Trump. These are dark times for our nation. As my beautiful home, Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, is currently under siege, raided and occupied by a large group of FBI agents, nothing like this has ever happened to a president in, United, in the United States before. Yeah, this is... I, 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 I mean, I, I still can't even believe it. Like, I can't... I, If it, it, <laughs> I'm just not even gonna. This is getting so dark so quickly. It really is. It's chilling. It's chilling. It's chilling. Um, I really do feel like I'm living in a third world country. Like I even look around and it feels. It feels like a third world country. It feels like a tyrannical society. It feels like uh, I'm under a Leninist regime. That's, you know, we do have some cultural protections and power with the Constitution. It's still somewhat upheld, like, somewhat. I mean, high, high emphasis on somewhat. Um, and we do have, like, a Supreme Court that's, like, stopping certain things. But, what, I mean, if we didn't have that, man, if we didn't have that Supreme Court in there, like, imagine what America would look like if they didn't stop Biden's nationwide vaccine mandate for all companies with 100 employees or more. Imagine what the United States would look like if that wasn't stopped. Like, just imagine. That's why That's why a lot of people will say, like, you know, it's like, we do actually have it a lot better than most countries. We really do. But it's it's devolving just quickly into a third world nation. If it's if it if this isn't stopped, you know, like we're just so lucky we had like the Supreme Court as a firewall to some of this tyranny, like because it would be here, if there was like it was that close, it would be like this would be looking like what China's looking like right now. There's videos coming from China where they're sticking swabs, COVID test swabs, into the mouth of fish and shrimp to test like the fish that they catch in the sea. To see if they have COVID? Yeah, people have to, like, swipe their, you know, mark of the beast, like, chip or whatever to get into anywhere. Everything's tracked and recorded. It's, it's awful. It's a nightmare. Anyways, bit of a rant. So, uh, da, 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 da. after working and cooperating with the uh, relevant government agencies, big mistake, uh, this announcement raid on my home was not necessary or appropriate. It is prosecution, prosecutorial misconduct and weapon, weaponization of the justice system and an attack by radical left Democrats who desperately don't want me to run for president in 2024, uh, especially based on recent polls and who will likewise do anything to stop Republicans and conservatives in upcoming midterm elections. Such an assault could only take place in broken third world countries. Sadly, America has now become one of those countries, corrupt at a level not seen before. They even broke into my safe. What is the difference between this and Watergate, where operatives broke into the National Democ uh, Democrat National Committee? Here in reverse... Democrats broke into the home of the 45th president of the United States. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of uh, just the language here. I love how he like he 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 creates like his own private office and and he calls it the office of the 45th president of the United States of America to like give this air of authority like he's like he's still the president. <laughs> It's it's just funny. It's just so Trumpian. Uh, the political persecution of the uh, of uh, President Donald Trump has been going on for years with the now fully debunked Russia, Russia, Russia scam, impeachment hoax number one, impeachment hoax number two, and so much more. It just never ends. It's it is political targeting. It is political targeting. Uh, where oh. At the highest level, Hillary Clinton was allowed to delete an acid wash 33,000 emails after they were subpoenaed by Congress. Absolutely nothing has happened to hold her accountable. She even took antique furniture and other items from the White House. 
I stood up to America's bureaucratic corruption and restored power to the people and truly delivered for our country like we have never seen before. The establishment hated it. Now, as they watch my endorsed candidates win big victories and see my dominance at the polls, they are trying to stop me and the Republican Party once more. The lawlessness, political persecution, and witch hunt must be exposed and stopped. I will continue to fight for the great American people. So this is um, this is his statement, uh, and of course you already have the uh, expected pro-Trump um, governors calling this out, and this is this is the beginning of like. The, the division of the country, I think. You're seeing you, the, the, the alliances form. Um, and it's really kind of interesting. Carrie Lake here says, uh, if they can target a former president, they win, they can and will target you. Do you think it's a coincidence that they hired 87,000 IRS agents the day before this raid? Not a single one of us is safe. I'll talk about the IRS thing in a second too. Yeah, it's getting it's getting really creepy, guys. Really creepy. DeSantis said the raid of uh, Mar-a-Lago is another escalation in the weaponization of federal agencies against the regime's political oppo- opponents. While people like Hunter Biden get tra- treated with kid gloves, now the regime is getting another 87k IRS agents to wield against its adversaries. Banana Republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean. A lot of talk of the IRS here. Um, so you also had Christy Nome mentioning this too, mentioning some of the uh, corruption here. The FBI raid in President Trump's home is an unprecedented political weaponization of the Justice Department. They've been after President Trump as a candidate, as president, and now as former president, using the criminal justice system in this manner is un-American. Yeah, it's like it's very similar to the NKVD or, you know, the SS or, uh, you know, the Gestapo or something like that. Yeah, it it really is. um, It's very it's very crazy. Like, like really thinking about it. It's like just thuggery. It's thuggery. It's mob violence. Really, it's mob violence. Um, It's just political factions fighting over the reins of power and doing Right now, it seems like the Biden administration, Merrick Garland, the Democrats are doing everything they can to bolster this narrative that Trump is a criminal so they can indict him and prevent him from running for president. Um, I think, I don't know if it's true that an indictment would, would stop, be able to stop him, but it, they could put a, uh, you know enough pressure, or it might be true, I'm not really sure. But the, but the whole point is to put a, enough pressure on him and uh, uh, to, to to mark him as uh, public enemy number one with all the power they have, even though it's waning, because a lot of people are waking up to the media corruption, to the uh, Democratic Party corruption, and to the uh, outlandish nature of their narrative they're trying to push. But at the same time, they're still going to try as hard as they can, and at the same time, they're an extreme threat. Um, so you know you can't say that these people are defeated by any means at all. But meanwhile, like like some of these people have been saying all over Twitter, you know, the, you know these uh, Chrissy Nome and uh, DeSantis and all that, with with the IRS expanding more than doubling their employees with this new bill that's about to pass. It was just approved by the Senate. Mansion, total total scumbag. He, 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 I mean, he sold out big time. You know, he was stopping a few things. Now he's just letting this one go because he's kind of like the. Uh, uh, the guy who who, who he has, like, he's the most powerful man in America right now. He, he's he's the guy in Senate who who's like a Democrat, but sometimes like votes with the Republicans, and it basically it's it's split down the Senate uh, half and half. And this guy is is always the uh, not not the odd man out. What's it like the tiebreaker, so to speak? Um, and he whatever he decides to do is what gets passed in, in America as legislation federally now. This one guy, Mansion, so. I mean, he's letting this one go. He stopped. What did he stop before? The uh, uh, was it gun legislate? No, he stopped a few. Few that. Um, oh, the the Build Back Better <laughs> initiative, the Build Back Better package. But a lot of those things, I think, were repackaged into this bill, the Inflation Reduction Act. I love how they just name bills. 
probably the opposite of what they're actually going to do. I, I even talked about this, how this bill is called the Inflation Reduction Act, but they admit that it's going to actually increase inflation for a little while and then reduce it. Um, but all it really does is it raises your taxes. That's all it does. So, you know, th- there's a trick that the government does. Instead of like raising interest rates sometimes to curb inflation, they'll just raise tax taxes so people have less money to spend. Oh, that's that's brilliant, right? Just make people poorer so they don't spend as much so prices will go down. Yeah, that's just freaking brilliant, right? Like who would have thought of that? Um, yeah, it just makes everybody even more poor anyway. It's not like it's just like either way you're screwed, right? Right? You could they they could they could continue inflating and not raise taxes and it would just be a tax anyway in the inflation. So I guess it doesn't really matter. But like um what are some of the things in this Inflation Reduction Act? $369 billion on ener- energy and climate efforts? Oh, you mean like smart cities? You mean like, uh, you know, funding all these, uh, politi- uh, you know, N- NGOs and uh, political think tanks to figure out how to take away people's rights and how to uh, uh, sort of... Um, manifest the same situation that they have in the Netherlands right now, you know, using uh, local and state and federal government to take away, uh, you know, your, the farmer's ability to farm and things like that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Um, you know, a, a lot of these climate efforts and energy efforts aren't what you think it is. You know, a lot of these things are, are meant to bring about something that, um, uh, equals more control, more control, more government control in your lives, right? It's not just, oh, we're going to fund some electric cars, you know, oh, we're going to fund some sol- solar energy panels, right? No. Uh, and by the way, this is all done by by robbery. And that's the other thing. Uh, hold on. I'll get to that in a second. Over $300 billion in green loan guarantees. So loaning out to, you know, um, the uh, the blue bloods that own all the um, uh, what do you call it uh, climate change companies I guess I don't know you know uh, efficient energy green uh, smart city blah 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 whatever uh, eighty billion to double the number of IRS agents to conduct audits so they're robbing you of your money this is your money their tax money that they're using eighty billion dollars to figure out even more thorough ways to rob you. So it's just a double entendre, right? Uh, 80 billion to double the number of IRS agents, more than double actually, because there's like 80, there's actually 79,000, like 900 or something IRS agents right now. And they're going to hire another 87,000 more. It's going to more than double IRS. By the way, the um, income tax, which was passed in 1913 i think it was or 1914 was supposed to be temporary total fraud income tax federal income tax is a total fraud total fraud and it was one of those things they slipped in sort of like the patriot act and then it was never recanted it was never tracked back uh, it was supposed to be temporary. You were told that it was one of these things that were eventually, you know, uh, it was just a little bit of, you know, federal income tax. You're just going to take some of your hard-earned wages, um, you know, to spend on government programs that will help you. And then eventually it just kept expanding and expanding. It never was retracted. It never was recanted. It just kept growing and growing. And now it's being used to enslave you. It's your money being stolen from you without your consent it'd be one thing if you consented to it no no no. you have no choice right um and if it, you could try to not pay your taxes um but you know what would happen guys with guns would show up to your house eventually um if you kept ignoring the irs they would show up to your house with guns and arrest you and put you in a cage so it is theft right it is outright theft so, and it's based on a lie. Sixty billion for environmental justice initiatives. Environmental justice initiatives. 
that screams double speak. Obviously, I, I I can only imagine the specifics of that. Of course, the bill is probably like a hundred thousand pages long. So who has time to look into what the specifics are right now? It'll probably take a week. I'll have to probably do another show on this, you know, because you know, a lot of these things you just gotta you gotta point point toward and set see what's going on, and shed light on it so you can get the word out so people can stop this, you know. Nine billion in tax credits for wealthy families to buy electric vehicles. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. Nine billion tax credits if you buy like a Tesla. It's like who can afford a Tesla? Well, wealthy people. Nobody can afford electric vehicles except the upper middle class. So all of these uh, are tax credits for just like upper middle class, right? Uh, Two point six billion to conserve co- coastal habitats and. T- 1.5 billion to plant trees to be honest those little ones i'm not even totally opposed to but here's the thing will that be used efficiently well uh, i mean are they really gonna do what they say they're gonna do with it you know or are they gonna you know that's the other thing even if they were would it be efficiently done you know it's like the government can't really do things efficiently you're better off getting you know private organizations to to do this kind of stuff right and uh and philanthropy and stuff. So the government just does everything poorly. I mean, just you just go to the uh, DMV to see how awful it is. Um, you know how awful the the whole thing is. It's just it, it's incompetent. And you know that's part of the reason why. You know, even though they're hiring eighty seven thousand new IRS agents, you know, part of me says like, uh, you know, with all the quotas they have, like they don't even hire people based on merit anymore. They hire people based on skin color and who they, you know, sleep with, and um, who, what they identify as now. Um, so, you know, will they even do a good job in trying to like track your, uh, you know, the wealthy guys, uh, you know, taxes he didn't pay or something, or the, even the middle class guy whose taxes he, he didn't pay or was trying to avoid or something? They probably won't even do a good job anyway. You know, a lot of these new people they're hiring won't even know what they're doing anyway. You know, these are going to be like millennial, trans, North African lesbian, you know, and it's not, you know, they won't even have uh, credentials or proper experience or, you know, the ability to do the job. Just look at, look at the press secretary, right? Whatever her name is that nobody can pronounce, right? Um, Jean Klein, Schmon Klein, I don't even know. Um, like she just really sucks at her job, but of course, you know, uh, she's, I, I'm pretty sure she like sleeps with women and she is a person of color. So obviously that qualifies her. So, but you know, when you start making that the criteria for what, you know, how you're going to hire people, that's why I'm kind of almost not worried about this. I feel like it's just going to collapse on itself, but we'll still bear the brunt of it. We'll still bear the brunt of it. You know, when, when, when the government collapses, it already is collapsing. It's, it's already devolved into a banana republic style, you know, battle for power. Um, it's going it, to, we're going to bear the brunt of it no matter what happens, you know. Ah, oh, yes. Dems poised to make IRS larger than the Pentagon, State Department, FBI, and the Border Control combined. This is the thing. They care a lot less about catching actual criminals. They, they care more about stealing from the average lower class or middle class Americans. That's what matters to them. That's why they're hiring all these IRS agents. It's not about stopping the drug trafficking, the fentanyl, which is a total, total devastating epidemic in this country, especially in the working class towns. It's just, it's awful. And I I know because I've seen, I've seen it, you know, the fentanyl, the opiates, all that stuff. Um, multiple friends from high school and college that have died from this. Um, so that is really what they should, I mean, if you're going to steal our money, use it to fight that. Not that you'd even be able to do it efficiently because you're the federal government, but still, at least you, you're it's trying to go towards something that isn't just used to figure out more efficient ways and thorough ways to rob people like us, right? The average person. 
so awful. I, I hate these people. Our country's falling apart. I hate it. Over 230 economists warned Manchin's spending bill were, will perpetuate inflation. 230 economists. Okay, yeah, they'll just bat, bat an eye to it, though. They don't, you know, the government doesn't care. The Democrats don't care. Blah, 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 blah. Don't care. Not, don't want to hear it. Blah, blah, blah. Nope, 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 nope. They cover their ears like little children and they go, no, 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 no. 300, uh, uh, I'm sorry, $739 billion package. We're in a lot of trouble. We're in a lot of trouble. It's all, it's all over, guys. We really are like in a lot of trouble. This country is just... But keep your, keep your head up. Keep your hopes, hopes up. You know, you know my motto, no fear. Things will be good. You know why? Because you got, you got resisting the reset here to tell you what's going on. So you can prepare. You can also take, you know... Um, Take refuge in, in, in you know, uh, sort of like the, the groups. Uh, we have uh, Telegram. Join Telegram if you haven't. Um, or my Patreon as well. Uh, links for that in the description box below. Um, where you can contribute to my channel through Patreon or PayPal as well. Uh, and, or join the, uh, the Telegram too. And that's just totally free. Um, you can, you know, contribute, uh, you know, that way. Or drop a comment below. You know, we can, we can get through this together, guys. Um you know, I would suggest also to maybe try to either get out of the cities or move to a better state or, um, you know, get, get into an area where you have community and friends and stuff and we'll get through this. You know, it's, it's not going to be, it's not gonna be that bad, really. You know, it's not like it's me, Mad Max, the walking dead or something, you know, um, in some ways it will be, but, uh, we still do live in a, in a better country than, than most of the world. You know, it is better than China, China. Um, because I mean, I don't care what anyone says, any LARPers that say, uh, we're just as bad. They're really big idiots. They're really big idiots. Like, um, they're just, they're just not being intellectually honest. It, it is better to live here. <laughs> um, I guess you could say some areas it might not be actually like, like if you're in like San Francisco or something and you're you're like homeless like it really sucks and maybe you're better off in shanghai or something i don't know but for the most part you know we're, we're, we don't have it that bad inflation reduction act what's next for democrats climate and health care bill well what's next um well they're going to pass it because it was just approved by the senate and yeah we're in a lot of trouble Meanwhile, Biden just gave $1.3 billion additional to military and economic support in Ukraine. Yeah, we got to help uh, Zelensky. We got to help Zelensky. We got to save, um, save, you know, Eastern Eastern Europe. So your tax dollars, did, did you vote for this? Yeah, I, most people would probably, because they're NPCs, are probably... Uh, probably agree to this to be honest you know people are just just out of control i don't think they'd agree to the inflation reduction act though if they knew the specifics but i think a lot of people really are even though it's not the current thing anymore people will, will say oh yeah yeah give give everything to ukraine just give them everything you know uh, here give, give them all our nukes give them uh give them the uh, the whole you know the give them the records that uh that trump stole you know, <laughs> like the papers, the papers from the desk. It's like, what did he do? What did Trump do? Uh, he, he he snuck the papers out of the Oval Office desk. I mean, he just like shoved them in it in his back pocket and walked out, like tried to pretend like they weren't on his back pocket. He's like, hey, guys, see ya. Hey, I lost the election. See ya. Uh, right. Come on. He, he has the documents. Stupid. So dumb. Meanwhile. Life insurance companies are announcing that there has been a huge increase in deaths, random deaths, amongst people 18 to 64. Hmm, that's kind of weird. Like normally, like 40%. Whoa, that's like, whoa, that's a lot. Like um, that just doesn't happen for no reason. Like um, I wonder what that could be from. Mm, I don't know. Hmm, I'm trying to think. Young people dying suddenly. Over the past year and a half, I wonder what's changed since two, three years ago. 
what has been introduced to the population in the past year, year and a half that it, it wasn't here before? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I can't think. I'm not sure. I don't know. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's a, that's another thing occurring. Uh, and check this video out. U.S. life insurance companies have reported an overwhelming and unexplainable increase in all-cause deaths among 18 to 49-year-olds. Along with that, there's also been an increase in certain medical diagnoses, such as miscarriages and Bell's palsy. Here to give us her take on the new data and what she believes could be causing the rise in numbers is emergency medicine and disaster specialist, Dr. Kelly Victory. Dr. Victory, good morning. Great to talk to you as always. Good morning, Jason. Thanks for having me. Okay, we want to make sure that anytime we talk, we want to make sure the information that we have is accurate. So let's start this interview by telling us, I've, I've seen your correspondence here, what is the source of the information that you're about to present? Well, this information became uh, available to me or on my radar last week following a hearing with Senator Ron Johnson, uh, who was looking at sort of what he calls a second opinion on the entire response to the COVID pandemic. The medical data was released by three career military physicians who got the information from the military database that collects what we call ICD codes, which are the diagnosis codes. And these physicians had a feeling, they believed based on their own observation that they were seeing a significant uptick in certain conditions. So they actually went back and called the database from the military on certain conditions over a five year period from 2016 through 2020, uh, notably con you know, continue, or, uh, containing one year, 2020, of the full-blown pandemic. So they looked at 2016, 17, 18, 19, and 20 at the prevalence of certain conditions, including things like heart attack, blood clots to the lung, miscarriages, those sorts of things. And they compared it to the incidence of those same things in the calendar year 2021 and saw an alarming increase in certain things. For example, they saw a 270% increase in myocardial infarction in 2021, a 300% increase in incidence of Bell's palsy and of certain neurologic complaints. Uh, it's a mystery, guys. It's a mystery wrapped in an enigma. We don't know what it could be. I don't know. what In 2021, 40% uh, increase in young people dying suddenly from myocarditis and all that. I, I don't know what that could be. Maybe it's... um. Maybe it's Trump derangement syndrome. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but this is a totally unrelated... Uh, totally unrelated topic, but look at this guy. So this is a man who tracked down the doctor of one of his family mem uh, of one of his family members that this doctor recommended the covid you know what to this family member of his and that family member of his died um possibly as a result of it i suppose i'm not sure but um check this out Are you catching this yeah Fucking idiot. Fucking idiot. Fucking idiot. You got the vaccine. Didn't bother you. You fucking both got the fucking vaccine and it's lost a lot. Leave me alone. So I think you're going to see more incidents like this as things happen. So, uh, yeah, and obviously I don't. I, I'm against any form of, of violence. Uh, this isn't, uh, I, I do not uh, advocate for this. I, I, I disavow, I disavow. But, you know, it's understandable people are upset and all that. Um, so I think you're going to see more of it. That's just my prediction. Now, meanwhile, in China, now I know this is Selena Wang. I know this is CNN. There's a couple other clips too. This isn't just CNN reporting on it, but this is uh, an interesting little report. Um, out of Beijing, yeah, it, I mean, it is getting pretty bad in China with the with the with the COVID restrictions. It has been bad, 
it let up for a brief period, I, I want to say, like at the end of uh, about a year ago. And then it ramped right back up over the winter and now into this summer. And they are basically in 2020 style, total lockdown still. Um, like vaccine passports, um, uh, you know, people being told to stay home, uh, contact tracing and all this, uh, being locked in their homes. <laughs> You know, having to swipe a card or, you know, your microchip or whatever it is just to get into certain establishments, you know, having your your, your vaccine um, uh, history uh, in there and, and, you know, having proof of that to do anything. So COVID testing, too. So this is what's going on in China. This is part of my daily routine in Beijing. All right, getting my temperature checked. Mandatory testing for the city's 20 million plus residents. So I've got to show them my passport and they have to type it in every single time. Beijing halted almost all public activity for weeks over just a few dozen daily COVID cases. Non-essential stores have been shut down, including schools and gyms, and all in restaurant dining is banned indefinitely. The capital recently reopened some venues like malls. All restaurant dining is banned indefinitely. Like, what? I feel really bad because the Chinese really are great people. And it's really sad that their government, like the C it's really sad that the CCP's in power there. And, and I mean, I really do hope that that regime falls. I really do. Um, because China has so much potential if they just get rid of this communist sort of, well, I guess it's more fascist actually. A lot of people think China's like totally communist. They kind of have uh, like a free market, but it, it, they work, it's, it's, it's actually a communist country. I, I mean, a fascist country. Um, I don't know why people think it's communist, probably because the com Chim Ch Chinese Communist Party, it's definitely a lot of state intervention but so is fascism. It definitely feels to me more like a fascist country um, than it does a communist country because, um, I don't know, I guess that that's a very debate. You could debate that. It's it maybe a combination of both. Anyway, I'm ranting. Malls and parks with limited capacity and visitors have to show proof of a recent COVID test. But still, the biggest crowds often appear to be parades of COVID workers spraying disinfectant all over the streets. So it's green. I'm good to go in. I need this green code to enter any area in Beijing. If it turns red, then I could be stuck at home or sent to quarantine. Through these smartphone apps, authorities can carefully track the movements of virtually all of China's 1.4 billion people. Grocery shelves here fully stocked. Beijing officials clearly trying to show people that no matter how long this partial lockdown lasts for, people are going to be fed. Not like in Shanghai, where people struggled to get enough food when they were locked down. This is a building where a positive COVID case has been found. You can see the workers in hazmat suits, the blue barrier around the building. This is to keep the people who live there locked inside, but it also serves as a warning to other residents. There's a fear that if you spend too much time by a lockdown building, your QR code could turn red. Just one positive COVID case can get an entire building bus to government quarantine. This is just one of the many high-risk areas in Beijing. Residents avoid even transiting through the red dots on the map. It's lunchtime in Beijing's most popular food district. Normally people here would be gathered, crowded shoulder to shoulder, but now it is essentially a ghost town. And even here, there are signs reminding people to avoid crowds and security guards on the loudspeakers telling people to distance themselves. But after more than two years of these on and off restrictions, people are getting frustrated. Every part of our days are tracked and surveilled. People are concerned that this control is here to stay long after COVID is gone. And Becky, it sounds like a dystopian movie to have a colored code either give you access to society or send you to quarantine or keep you locked at home. But this is the reality of what we're dealing with in China. My daily routine. You know, it's really funny that she says that because if good old Fauci was still on the screen and, you know, 
The NPCs and the normies still were following his directions, and he said that we needed to do something like this. They would follow lockstep, and she would be saying that this is very, very necessary if that were the lines she were that she was given, you know, by whoever is giving her her lines here. Obviously, it's CNN, but who, you know, who's giving them their lines? Probably the intelligence agencies, deep state, sort of globalists. And, like, this is what I'm talking about. And, like, because this country re rejected it in, in mass, for the most part, at least enough of us did, um, you know, they kind of have to pretend like, oh, you know, they're, they're, they, they're, you know, what they're looking at in China is just something foreign to them and something dystopian. But in reality, this is what they want. And they were pushing for this in our country vaccine passports. You know, uh, contact tracing, tests everywhere. You know, the app, the universal app. You know, what, what, what was the name of the app? The health app or something. Uh, one health, whatever. The one, I, I covered it, but it's been a little while now. There were a couple of them competing for the, for the government app to be able to, for, for, for your right to travel uh, across the country. You had to have had your vaccine or whatever it was. Remember when Biden said he was considering interstate restrictions? Remember that? Remember when Biden was like, ah, I'm cons it was like September, October 2021, the Biden regime came out and said they were considering blocking people from being able to travel interstate without a vaccine passport, without proof of vaccination. Don't even get me started, CNN, telling me you think this is dystopian. Oh, it's almost like a dystopian. Oh, yeah. These people make me sick. Routine every day is entirely dictated by the color of the code on my phone. If it were to go red, everything would be upended. And the way the technology works is rather opaque. So oftentimes the message is to be safe, to stay away from those high risk areas. And across China, local governments are pouring so many resources into surveillance, into these lockdowns, into mass testing. By CNN's calculations, just one day of mass testing in Beijing is costing the city around $10 million. And health experts say more focus perhaps should be put on increasing vaccinations in China, especially among the elderly and important note here that mRNA vaccines are still not available to the population here in China. So the government here still calling zero COVID a success, a victory. So this type of new normal we're living, it's not going to go away anytime soon. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, and here's video from uh, Chinese social media. <laughs> They're testing the fish. <laughs> I don't really want to play. Hold on, me. That that could strike a uh, copyright, so I'm gonna turn down the. Uh, look at this. They're testing the. Was that crawfish? Uh, <laughs> I love them. <laughs> Hold on. Look at the fish. <laughs> he's, get, oh, he's getting swabbed. They're swabbing the fish's mouth, dude. What? You cannot make this stuff up. You really can't. I mean, look at this. It reminds me of, you guys ever have that thing? My father used to have it. It's like this, uh, this, uh, like mechanical fish you put on the wall and you press the button and it sings, uh, take me to the river, put me in the water. It's like a, like a bass that will sing for you in turn. It's funny. That's what this reminds me of. It looks exactly like it. Spitting image. Um, Alex Jones, uh, just an update on that. So my previous video, I talked about how the punitive damages were going to be decided. You know, that uh, they, they decided first on about $4.1 I think it was. And now the punitive damages have been decided in Alex Jones's case with the Sandy Hook families. Um, an additional $45.2 million dollars. Uh, combined to $49.3 million um, that he has been ordered by the court to pay in damages to the Sandy Hook families. Um, now, that could get uh, like taken back in, in what do you call it, uh, bankruptcy court because he claims he doesn't have the money. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. But the whole thing is like that's, that's a lot of money. And the goal here is really to destroy Alex Jones. Check out this statement from 
the um, uh, attorney for the families of uh, the Sandy Hook families here saying that Alex Jones is patient zero and we need to make it that he can never have free speech again, basically. That's essentially what he says. Make it so that he can never run his operation again, his news media company again, just completely destroy him essentially as 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 a as a human and you know his work. So that that's what this is about. It's about destroying Alex Jones. I ask that with your verdict you not only take Alex Jones platform that he talks about away. I ask that you make certain he can't rebuild the platform. That's what matters. Take him out of this discourse, of this misinformation, of this peddling of lies, and make sure he can't do it again. That is punishment. That is deterrence. Misinformation spreads six times faster than the truth. That's what we heard on that stand, and I believe it. Alex Jones found a way to monetize that. Boy, did he find a way to monetize it. And in monetizing that, he made a wealth, a huge, huge amount of money. I hope that we never see someone like him again. I hope that with your verdict, he can go away. Alex Jones is patient zero for our society's inability to speak without lies. I believe it. He is patient zero for alternative facts. You heard it on that stand. Ms. Karpova on that stand literally used the words alternative facts or alternative reality, something like that. So there's the agenda. He just laid it out. You know, they want to make it so nobody can ever question an official narrative again. You know, Alex Jones is patient zero. He is the, uh, you know, the, um, I guess the canary in the coal mine. You know, he, he was the first one to get banned on so much of the social medias. And now he, he'll probably be, he won't be the first one uh, to to get sued for questioning the official narrative of anything. So the government... You're not allowed to say the government's lying to you. You're not allowed to say the media is lying to you. Um, you're not allowed to to make a living off that. You know. You know. God forbid that you know you dedicate your life to finding the truth, right? So, like, this is what the the agenda is here. This is the fear uh, I have of, uh, of of this trial of of the results of it and and um and where it goes. Um, now, I will say this just to play devil's advocate because it's worth saying. I think you know you, you look at some of the uh, ways it was used for the other side, the other way around, um, you know, Nick Sandman getting a settlement from certain mainstream media outlets. I don't know if it was the New York times or Washington post or whoever that, you know, claimed he was like a racist and all this stuff, white supremacist, whatever. Nick Sandman was the, uh, Covington Catholic school, uh, kid that, uh, you know, the media demonized and, and slandered, um, and he was able to get a settlement because he was a private individual getting slandered by a media outlet. And, you know, you could say it's the same thing here with Alex Jones with um, uh, the Sandy Hook thing. But there's no proof. There, 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 here's the thing. What happened to Sandman and what happened to, like, Rittenhouse, too? Rittenhouse, similar, similar. You know, he's he's going after some of these media outlets for calling him a white supremacist and all this stuff when it isn't true. And, you know, lying about the event with his altercation in the street and what was it Kenosha um, the difference between this and, and, and Sandy Hook is the Rittenhouse and Sandman were on video it was clear as day as what what happened it's on video and you can't dispute it there's no disputing what Alex was doing although I don't really know the, the, the full details of like everything he said about Sandy Hook but he was more like and what many people would do if they were questioning a narrative like Sandy Hook, maybe not Sandy Hook specifically, is they would they would come up with you know speculation on it, and and you know speculate, um, you know because there is no video of what happened in there, 
Um, so th that's the difference. You know, if you got something that's just on video, like what happened with Nick Sandman or what happened with Rittenhouse, there's no disputing that they were defamed. There's no disputing that they were slandered. It's, it's open and shut. There's video proof. So, so, so that's, that, that's the difference. Um, so I, it's not even me playing devil's advocate. That's me responding to the people playing devil's advocate because I heard, I've heard a lot of that argument be, being used. That being said, I'm done for today. Uh, let me know what you think. Like, share, and subscribe. Share this video far and wide. Also, follow me on BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, and Gab TV. I just started posting on Debt Gab TV. It's cool. I like it. It works. I'm good. I'm good with it. And also follow me on Gab, just regular Gab, right? At Press Reset Earth. And on Twitter, at Press Reset Earth. And if you want to contribute to my work, I have a Patreon and a PayPal in the link uh, in the description box below where you can uh, contribute. Um, help build the channel. And you can message me on there and all of that. And also you can join the Telegram group where we're always sharing information and all of that. It's been Press. Keep your head up, stay real, and no fear.